co-founder of On The Wing. And today we are here with Leela, our Eurasian Eagle Owl, a relative to the Great Horned Owl. Um, so a Eurasian Eagle Owl, where do you think that that bird would be native to based on the word Eurasian, that region? Is anybody coming up with some areas? Russia, yes, Siberia, Asia, good. Yeah. So these are, this is one of the largest owl species in the world. Um, I'd say it's equivalent to a golden eagle in terms of uh, hunting skills and strength. Um, and you think about uh, the face of the clock, right? Whoa, um, good thing that's not on camera. <laughs> she just went to the bathroom. Um, you look at the face of the clock and all species have a shift on that clock. It's almost like a factory and it's working 24 seven, right? And so an eagle owl probably balances the time of night or day that um, a, a golden eagle would be hunting. Um, and they're obviously um, controlling certain species. Okay, well, hold on one sec, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so I guess we'll introduce Leela, let me get her back on the perch here. Come on, Leela. Come on. Come on, let's go. Hit. Yep, film her. Film her. She's going to throw up a pellet. So uh, Leela looks like she's working up a pellet. Here, Ivy, can I have that? It's down here. Sorry, guys. Let's see if we can show you. She's going to throw up a pellet. Oh. Just what you want to see. So birds, um, raptors, cast a pellet every eight to 12 hours. Oh, there you go, there's the prize. There's Leela. I'm gonna give this back to Ivy while I get her back on the perch. Come on, Leela. Hey, let's go. Come on, let's go. All right. She doesn't get all upset here. Um, so come on, let's go. All right. Well, Leela weighs uh, nine pounds, and um, our great horned owls weigh anywhere from I don't know two, two and a half to four and a half pounds. Uh, males usually, typically, are smaller in birds of prey. However, there are um, circumstances where you know you've got birds in that gray area and it could be a male or a female. So you can't really base it on weight. Um, when Leela gets closer, when she gets back up on the perch here, I'll hold up a great horned owl foot next to her foot so that you can compare the size. But what's cool is um, owls have the ability to move their outside digit, their, their thumb right here. Um, and this digit can move backward or forward and so they could have their feet in this formation of two forward, two back, or three forward and one back. Usually the two forward and two back are for grabbing when they're hunting, and the three forward and one back is for when they're perching. But you can see all the feathers um, that go all the way down to the top of the talons. And our birds in our area of the world, in our area of the United States, um, owls, have feathers that go all the way down, this is an adaptation, so that they are protected from our extreme conditions, like cold weather, like the snow that we got last night. Um, so this protects their digits um, as they're hunting. And then I, I, I'm always fascinated by the feathers that are around their legs. They almost look like little Yeti boots. Um, and it, it does look like fur, but it's actually feathers. They're beautiful feet, aren't they? Hopefully they will come back up on the perch for you. Um, and our great horned owls, their wingspan uh, is anywhere from, I don't know, maybe like two and a half, four, four and a half feet. And this is a great horned owl wing. You can see the pattern is very similar, being a relative to Leela. Um, they have the same markings, patterns. 
Her colors are a little richer and darker and more saturated in, in color. Do you have Leela in there? So Leela has what's called ear tufts. She's not, <laughs> she's not cooperating with me today. Um, she has what's called ear tufts on the top of her head. And those aren't actually ears. They are um, feathers that are used for communication. Uh, it, they can be used for camouflage. And there we go. Oh, good girl. Um, and they can also be used um, for dropping sound into her ear channels. Can you turn around, please? Can you turn around? Can you turn around, please? No. Can you turn around, please? Wow, all right. So maybe she'll turn around and look at Ivy. Um, and then you can see one of the adaptations that owls have is, uh, we've talked about this the other day with Arlo, that some people think that Owls have the ability to turn their head all the way around, but what would happen if we turned our head all the way around? It wouldn't work, would it? We, we would cut off the blood supply to our head. Um, let's see if she'll look over here. What's that? <laughs> so an adaptation that they have, that, um, and the reason that adaptation is in place is because you look at her large eyes and they're locked in these sockets and they're tubular eyes. So her eyes can't roll like a human's eyes can. They don't have the ability to look right, left, up and down. Some people even cross their eyes. They can't cross their eyes, obviously. Um, but their cervical spine, which is their neck, they have double the amount of vertebrae that a human has. Does anybody know how many vertebrae a human has in their cervical spine, their neck? Is anybody answering? Yep, somebody said 14. So we've got seven times two equals 14. And that's what gives them that ability to turn their head 270, 280 degrees in each direction. So it almost looks like she's looking backwards. Let's see if I can make her. There we go. Anybody have any questions about Leela? Um, I think someone said, then where are their ears? <laughs> where are their ears? Okay, so if we look at this skull right here, their ears are right here, right just, just below the eye um, on either side. And on great horned owls or Eurasian eagle owls or any tufted owl, tufted ear owl, um, the ears look more symmetrical to our eye, but if you were to put it on a grid or measure it, they are asymmetrical. One face is up and one face is down. And also the skull sits a hairline forward on the right side than the left side. So wow, I'm gonna take her off this perch. She's breaking everything. Um, disaster, sorry. Here we go. Oh, I hope she didn't break my eggs. It sounds like maybe she did. You know, can you step up, please? Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe. Maybe. Come on. All right, here we go. Sorry about that, guys. I thought it would be easier if I brought her in and put her on a perch. Um, but she hasn't been on a perch in a while, so it was kind of unfair to her to do that. All right, so here we go. Um, I'll stand back here. You can see her ear tufts right here, and those usually go up high alert. Um, you can see that she's panting right now, just like a dog or a cat. Um, She's taking in air, she's cooling down. She's stressed out because um, she was trying to get away and it wasn't working um, in her favor. I wanted to share with you uh, an egg that she had laid. So this is the size egg that Eurasian eagle owls 
lay, and she laid a clutch of four of them last year and blew up the contents so I could kind of keep it and share it with, with you guys. Um, so she's getting ready to lay her eggs as well. Um, and that's another reason why she's not very happy about being inside right now. Um, and if you look at, let's see if she doesn't care, look how far I can poke my finger in before I touch her body. That's how deep her feathers are before I reach her body. So if you think about, she weighs nine pounds. A question that I get a lot is, is my dog safe outside? Is a raptor going to hunt my dog? Well, birds, birds of prey, typically hunt about 30% of their actual body weight. So she weighs nine pounds. So typically they'd hunt something around three pounds. However, a, a great horned owl or a Eurasian eagle owl, um, they're at the top of the food chain and they're pretty fearless. So they don't want to be on the ground. They're more vulnerable if they're on the ground. However, um, you know, a big owl like this, I don't think they have all that much fear of being on the ground. So our great horned owls typically take down um, skunk is one of their favorite um, species to hunt. And think about it, they're actually doing us a favor because skunks, they do us a favor too. They're aerating our lawn as they're digging up grubs, taking out um, the grub population that turns into Japanese beetles. And so when we have an upcycle of great horned owls, you know, typically we have an upside cycle of skunks because they're helping control those populations. Now, Leela, uh, if she was in her native habitat, in her native environment, um, they hunt badgers and wolverines. And if you think about a badger and a wolverine, they're, they're the same color, same patterns um, as a skunk. I find it very interesting that all those things all tie together, even from this part of the world all the way over to Eurasia. Um, a bird this size will live in captivity, um, they can live up to 50 years. It's opposite what a dog is. The smaller the dog, the, short, the longer the lifespan, and the bigger the dog, the shorter the lifespan. Well, so with birds, it's opposite. The bigger the bird, the longer the lifespan, and the smaller the bird, the shorter the lifespan. Um, does anybody have any questions? How old is she? How old is she? Leela is eight. What's her story? What's her story? Leela was born in captivity. She's a non-native non species, born in captivity, um, and she is an imprinted bird. So she cannot be released because she's a non-native species, and she's imprinted. Um, someone said, hi, Jane. My son, Michael, wants to know why this is called an eagle owl. Oh, that's a great question. I, I don't know. I'm going to have to look that up. Um, that I'll get back to you, Michael. How long have you had her? Eight years. Um, when is mating season? When is mating season? So again, it has to do with, you think about the scale or the size of the bird. The bigger the bird, they start mating first because they spend the longest amount of time when they're young. Um, and so this is the time of year when they're mating and on the nest. Actually, great horned owls, um, they're, 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 they've already hatched out. Um, and down in Massachusetts, they, they look like they're a few weeks old. So right, right now is the time. Why slash how do you have her? I have her for education. She was born in captivity with the purpose of education or exhibit. How old can they get? They can live up to 50 years in captivity. How do they smell? How do they smell? That is a great question, actually. Um, so owls typically smell um, like, like, like the forest. Um, a barred owl smells like, like a maple tree, not like, not, not, not like sweet maple syrup, but like a hardwood maple. Um, and she, yeah, she smells kind of woody. <laughs> um where is her nose <laughs> where is her nose that's a great question so right above her beak which you see her beak and behind all those bristle feathers that are wrapped around that beak um there's a wide mouth a wide 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 beak underneath there 
And um, above the beak is a waxy area called the sear. And that is where her nares are, her nostrils. And those are asymmetrical too. One sits a little bit forward and the other one sits a little bit back. How far can they see when they hunt? Oh, I don't know how far away they can see. I'd say more they're honed in on hearing. And um, owls don't hunt like diurnal birds. They're not pursuing as they're flying. They typically roost. Um, with the exception of short-eared owls they, they, and, and barn owls, they hunt more when they're flying. Um, but an owl like this would roost and um, wait and listen. And they have the ability to hear the heartbeat of prey three feet under cover or snow. And they know which direction that prey is headed. Does she hunt? She does not hunt. No, she's fed, um, you know, stocked mice, rats, um, rabbit, um, chicks. And in the summer, she'll get crayfish, fish, um, and sometimes we'll get chipmunks and stuff like that for her. What's her favorite thing to eat? Her favorite thing to eat is quail. How often does she lay eggs? Once a year. Um, why can't she be released? Fishing game is at my door right now. That's why I'm looking around. They just dropped off a little bird. <laughs> why can't she be released? Because she was born in captivity and she's a non-native species. How many owls do you have and do they get along with each other? So they all live separately. Um, and they, they, and in the wild, they would live separately. They live in, this, they're solitary animals. Um, and the only time they get together is when it's mating season, nesting and raising their young. Um, and then they take a sabbatical from each other and, uh, for a couple of months and then come back and do it all over again. Um, how many owls do we have? I, I don't, I don't know. Um, we've got Leela, um, we've got Saru, we've got Wonton, we've got two other, we've got Jim, um, and another screech owl. And so we have in Arlo, so we have six owls, seven, Floki, sorry. <laughs> Are they endangered and is she a hunted species? Uh, we don't have any endangered owls. Um, and what was the other question of that second part? Is she a hunted species? No, I mean, I don't know if they can hunt them in parts of Asia, but here they cannot hunt them, no. How much does she eat a day? She eats uh, between four and six chicks, rats, mice. Um, it just depends on the size. Why is she that color and can they be another color? Why is she this color? So why do you think she's this color? When you look at, at any animal, you think about the habitat that they live in and they have to camouflage themselves, right? So I would assume, just like with a great horned owl, that they would be in a, in a, a wooded area. Um, sometimes with the great horned owls, the lighter they are, they're typically um, nesting in open areas of marshes amongst like uh, great uh, blue herons or osprey. And so their coloring tends to be a little bit lighter. And if you think about a marsh and the coloring of a marsh, they, they, would, they would have to be lighter. And so when I look at her, I, I see her in more of like a red pine, red, red pine forest or red wood forest. Um, but again, they need trees like pine trees or in marshes, um, the dead snags, they need more of an open space because you look at the wingspan of this bird coming in, they, they don't have the ability, they can fly through the woods, but coming in and out, you know, to feed their young, they're going to trash their feathers. So you need that, you need wide open branches or a big, you know, um, bull pine that is, uh, you know, a dead tree, a snag, um, so that there's nothing obstructing uh, their wings. But I'll raise her up so you can see her wingspan. It's about six feet. Show me your wingspan. Here you go. Good girl. One more time. Good girl, Leela. I'm going to walk her toward the camera here so you can see the size of her feet. Unfortunately, she um, kind of threw everything around my floor, so I'm not able to hold up our great horned owl foot next to her foot. 
Is there any other questions before I put her away? How much does she weigh? She weighs nine pounds, but it feels almost like it's 90 right now. Um, can you explain what it means to be imprinted? Yes, yeah, so imprinted means it's during a stage of development when one species identifies itself with another. So when she, when we got her, she was a little owlet and all she was, all she knew was humans. Um, and so she relates with human beings. How big are their nests? Oh, uh, their nests. Uh, so they don't make nests. Um, these guys could uh, nest on a cliff, you know, side of a cliff. They could nest in the top of a, you know, a dead snag that's broken. If there's a hollow in a tree that's big enough, they would go in there. Um, or they'll take over an existing nest, like like our great horned owls will take over um, a great blue heron's nest, and they'll nest right there in the middle of that whole rookery. Um, same with an osprey nest, or they'll take over an old red-tailed hawk nest. If she were in the wild, what would her predators be? Another owl. Um, if she was down on the ground, um, she could find herself in trouble with a wolf, um, even a, a bear over in that area. Does she have large teeth? They don't have teeth. That was the last question. All right, well, you guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your day. Please stay healthy and safe. Um, social distancing is imperative right now. Um, and, and the sooner we do it, the sooner we can all get back together and then you guys can see, see these birds up close and personal in, in person. All right, take care. Bye.